Hi everyone, I'm Theodora and we're back with Eric Fennell to talk about auditioning in the US versus Europe. Aspetti, signorina, le dirò con due parole. Chi son? Chi son? to get your point of view because you've been incredibly successful in both the US and in Europe about if there is a difference in expectations on both behavior and how to dress in auditions in both places. Sure. Um, well, first, um, your, your personal presentation. Um, and that's basically what, you wear, what you're wearing. Uh, I find in general that the European auditions are much more casual. They really care more about the content as opposed to how you're dressed. Now, different roles might require, if you're singing for different roles, that might require you to dress a different way. Um, I, you know, if, if you're auditioning for Cotta Men, and you, you know, you want to present yourself as someone who has some sex appeal for the stage. Um, can't think of any other blatant examples like that, but yeah. Um, well, one nice thing, I mean, the, when it comes down to location, um, the big differences between the US and Europe is that everyone in the US comes to New York, rents, rents rehearsal space, and they hear all the singers in New York, or you know, people come from miles around New York or all over North America, they come to New York to audition. Uh, in Europe, there really isn't that system. Uh, when you audition for even some of the smaller houses, I mean, you audition for, Bremen or uh, Nice or, you know, some of these regional size houses in Germany or Austria, you travel there and that can get really expensive. I mean, between train tickets or flights, hotel, you know, because you want to stay overnight. I mean, if it's, you know, if uh, you're, you're, you don't, you don't want to travel a, a four hour train ride and then sing an audition, then jump back on the train and come back and you want to stay overnight. Now you're talking between 250 and 300 euros. Of course, you can write that off, but still you have to have the cash up front to do it. So that can be challenging. Um, you have to really sort of pick and choose um, what auditions are really worth it. You know, do they have a general, do they have an idea of who I am already? Um, you know, are they, generally interested in me for a particular role. Whereas New York, I mean, you go to New York, you spend two weeks there during uh, November or December, and you'll sing for almost, you, you know, if you've got an agent that really works, um, you can sing for 20 companies, you know? Um, so it's, uh, it's actually a little bit of a luxury for North American singers because in Europe, we really, we have to travel. I mean, I think I've done two auditions at the Vienna Staatsoper and, you know, just the investment already. I've done two, two auditions I've already invested 500 euros in, <laughs> at least 500 euros in that company and, and haven't gotten a contract there yet, so. <laughs> I can definitely relate to that, um, unfortunately. I now want to ask you about the difference in musical and artistic expectations in both Europe and the U.S. What I notice in Europe as opposed to the U.S., the U.S., the, the companies that are, are, the people that are doing the casting, it's usually one person. It tends to be one person. And when you're in Europe, you're usually singing for a committee of people. 
Um, especially in Germany, even the small houses, you're singing for like a panel of people, you know? And it's, it's not just the casting director, uh, but it's sometimes the general music director and sometimes the intendant and sometimes the principal uh, coach and sometimes the first Kapellmeister and, you know, the dramaturgs. Sometimes it depends on the house. Sometimes the dramaturg has a, has a lot of say in casting. It depends on their contract. It depends on the, the house and the, the sort of power struggle that goes on beneath, you know, inside the, that specific house politics, you know, so, uh, and there's, you know, if you can imagine, this is kind of, it kind of blows your mind. I mean, you know, here's Germany, the size of the state of Montana, and there's 80 opera houses. Each opera house has this little political system going on inside of it, you know? And so, yeah, you, you walk into these small houses for an audition and you're singing for eight people, 12 people, and you're like, okay, well, <laughs> Who's really doing the casting here? Because it usually comes down to really one person, but not always the case. Uh, sometimes they have a, an agreement where it's got to be, you know, whatever, seven of the 12 or have to have to agree on you or who, one guy who can kind of veto everybody. Or It's always different like that. So that's the big difference with the people you're singing for. The artistic standard or like what they're looking for. Hmm. In general, now this is only my personal experience, but in general, what I've noticed from the US companies is that they are, they are more concerned with the quality and size of someone's voice. Um, that's not to say that European companies are not uh, concerned with that. They are. But in addition, uh, because there is this um, international community, uh, especially in regards to uh, opera houses, I mean, in Germany, you always have um, Italians and, and French, French uh, people and sometimes English and sometimes American um, uh, deciding the castes. Uh, the expression of the words has to be the goal, uh, has to be a, a real goal of yours, especially if you're an American. It has to be something that you take very seriously and you work on diligently because they can always spot somebody who is sort of just saying the syllables uh, you know, over and over again uh, to, uh, you know, uh, 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 the flower song or Que Gele de Manina or, you know, I mean, you can just hear those singers who are singing the double T, but they don't really know why they're doing it. Um, uh, they've been sort of coached into this sort of uh, syllabic uh, pronunciation without the real connection to their own artistic idea. And it comes, to, I, I think, uh, I think that houses in, especially in Germany, but all over, um, all over Europe, I think they have, they don't always know about the voice so much, but they can tell when you're not doing the language right. They can tell when you're not invested. Um, and they will take a singer who they believe has better artistic expression sometimes uh, with an equal voice. Um, so, you know, that has to be a real priority if you're an American singer and you're coming to Europe where they oftentimes feel like uh, they originated this art form. You know, and, you know, I always feel like as an American, I, I still, you know, even now after 21 years of a professional career, I still feel like I'm a guest to this music. When I sing Verdi, when I sing Puccini and, and Bizet, I, I, I'm still humbled by, uh, by what these composers were able to do. And it, it's still a goal of mine, you know, 
uh, Carmen, I've sung, I don't know, I think 15 productions. I still feel like it's something new when I come back to it. Hoffmann, the same thing. Hoffmann is one of these operas that just goes on and on and there are these, idi there's the, these idiomatic phrases that he does that are so uh, quintessentially French. And <laughs> just an American oftentimes sounds, uh, uh, what's the word I want? Uh, not qualified to do it. So you really have to sell it. It always has to be an investment. Um, every, time you, every time you walk on the stage uh, for an audition or for a performance in Europe and you're not, uh, it's not your native uh, tongue or your, you know, even your, your second tongue, so, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your experience on that because I know personally that that was my experience that in Europe there is definitely a bigger stress on putting meaning behind the text. Um, I really want to thank you for being here today and answering these questions on auditioning in Europe versus the US. I'm really looking forward to continuing our conversation next time about getting hired off of media and just general advice that you have for young artists today. For those of you listening at home, please subscribe to Eric's YouTube channel and visit his website www.ericfinnell.com. You can find the links in the description below. I'm Theodora and we've been In the Wings with Eric Finnell. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have questions that you'd like me to ask in the future, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I hope you can join us next time.